We all know John McAfee for one reason, McAfee's antivirus software. Though his antivirus software is what garnered him worldwide fame, John was actually never that proud of this creation. For most of us, building a popular antivirus software that Intel would buy for $7.7 .7 billion would be the highlight of our lives. But for John McAfee, who had racked up achievements ranging from working on the Apollo program to running for US president, his stint with antivirus software was just another part of his life. Unfortunately though, I'm sure all of you guys heard about what just happened to John. So here's the bitter fall of John McAfee. John McAfee was born on September 18, 1945 on a US Army base located in Cinderford, England. Though he was born in England, most of his childhood would be spent in Salem, Virginia. John didn't have the greatest of childhoods, as his father was apparently an abusive alcoholic who took his own life when John was 15 years old. His father's alcoholism rubbed off on John as he picked up heavy drinking at a pretty early age. Despite his heavy drinking though, John was a high-functioning alcoholic who prevented his addiction from disrupting his academic excellence. McAfee would attend Roanoke College in Virginia and earn his bachelor's in mathematics in 1967. He would instantly turn around and pursue a mathematics doctorate from Roanoke, but this wouldn't last too long. You see, during his doctorate studies, John would form a relationship with an undergraduate student that the school was not too fond of. The school would expel John for this relationship, but John wasn't too worried. He already ran a local door-to-door -door magazine business, which he says made him a small fortune. Moreover, he was able to land a job at NASA after being expelled in 1968. During his time at NASA, John worked on the Apollo program as a programmer. And though he would only work at NASA for two years, those two years happened to be two of the most important years for NASA as they would place humans on the moon in 1969. After his time at NASA, John would jump from one company to another throughout the early 1970s. Throughout this time period, John would transition from simply being an alcoholic to being a drug addict. John says that drug use was extremely common within the tech industry at the time and that most of his bosses used them as well. Apparently, he had to hide them from his mother and wife, but he didn't have to hide them at the office during lunchtime. During this dark period of his life, he took on various software developer roles at Univac, Xerox, CSC, Booz Allen, and Lockheed. Though his career was progressing just fine, his life was starting to fall apart. In the early 1980s, his first wife would leave him, and he would finally come to the realization that he was too dependent on drugs and alcohol. So, he would join a rehabilitation organization called Alcoholics Anonymous, which would help him quit in 1984. At the time, he was working at Lockheed when the first computer virus called Brain came out. Intrigued by the virus, John would start to develop software that could combat computer viruses. And it wouldn't take long for John to start McAfee Associates in 1987, which sold the first antivirus software on the market. In the late 1980s though, the average person didn't have a computer, and the people who did have a computer didn't quite understand the threat of viruses. So, selling antivirus software for $50 a piece likely wouldn't have been that successful. John was well aware of this, and that's why he gave away his software for free. The company made money from providing additional technical support and upgrades. This clever move allowed the company to quickly dominate the market, as there was really no reason to not have McAfee antivirus software. Whether you thought computer viruses were a serious threat or not, having extra protection for free was a no-brainer. As the software exploded in popularity, so did the company's revenue, as they were making $5 million per year by the end of the 1980s. Going into the 1990s, the company's popularity would only continue to grow, as computer viruses became more prevalent. In 1992, a virus called Michelangelo would make a grand debut, infecting tens of thousands of computers. Though that scale is nothing compared to what we see today, Michelangelo became a turning point for consumer awareness surrounding computer viruses. McAfee would leverage this newfound attention and go public in 1992. In 1993, John would reduce his role in the company, stepping down from CEO to CTO. John would actually leave the company altogether the following year, but this didn't really matter. He had already built up McAfee to a strong position, and all that was left was continuing to improve their products and waiting for the market to grow. But this is when John's downfall would begin. Surprisingly, he would go ahead and sell his entire stake in McAfee, which was worth $100 million at the time. While that's an awesome sum of money, McAfee was still a very young company, and internet slash computer adoption was just starting to ramp up. So, selling his entire stake was a pretty stupid financial decision. That's like selling your Apple stock when the iPhone 4 came out. Moreover, John didn't even have to do anything. 
he just had to wait and he would have become a multi-billionaire in no time. But alas, that's not what happened. To make things even worse, he wouldn't preserve very much of the 100 million that he did cash out. John would turn around and go on a shopping spree. He would buy a $25 million mansion in Colorado, a mansion in Hawaii, a private jet, a 157-acre ranch in New Mexico, and dozens of luxury cars. He basically blew most of his money and put the rest in Lehman Brothers bonds. Though this was a terrible financial decision, he wouldn't feel the impact of this decision for quite some time. Throughout the late 1990s and early 2000s, John would lecture at Stanford's business school and work on two social network projects called Pow Wow and Tribal Voice. Neither of these projects ever gained that much traction though. Soon enough, the financial crisis of 2008 would roll around and this would basically wipe out the rest of John's fortune. The Lehman Brothers would go bankrupt, which would make John's bonds worthless. Meanwhile, he would have to sell his $25 million Colorado mansion for just $5.7 million, and his Hawaii mansion would be sold for $1.5 million. Unfortunately, he basically sold at the bottom of the market, and when everything was said and done, he only had $4 million. While that's still a decent amount, when you consider that he was on the verge of making $4 billion, it's really just quite sad. Since he burned his fortune, John would move to Belize in 2009, where his remaining $4 million would stretch much further. While at Belize, McAfee would start a pharmaceutical company called Quoramex. The company was supposed to use plants to combat various illnesses, but this attracted a lot of attention from the authorities. The police suspected that he was manufacturing methamphetamine, and they would raid his house in May of 2012. They wouldn't find any methamphetamine, but they did find an abundant amount of firearms, which provoked them to throw John in jail for the night. Later that same year, one of McAfee's neighbors named Gregory Fall would be murdered. John would become the prime suspect due to his large possession of firearms and his unfriendly relationship with Gregory. Gregory apparently poisoned John's dogs, and this is the alleged reason for John wanting to take out Gregory. But none of these allegations were ever quite confirmed. John would claim that the Belizean authorities were trying to frame him, and he would flee to Guatemala. Unfortunately for John, a vice reporter would accidentally leak his location, and Guatemalan authorities would arrest him for illegally entering the country, and they would deport him back to the US. After returning to the US in 2013, John would start to play McAfee antivirus software, claiming that it had become one of the worst products on the planet. He didn't like that his name was still being used to market the product, and when Intel announced that they would change the branding of McAfee to Intel Security, John expressed that he was eternally grateful to Intel. Ironically, McAfee would end up demerging with Intel in 2017 and take on the name McAfee once again. The demerged company actually just went public at the end of 2020 and they're worth about $12 billion today. Clearly, McAfee Corporation has been consistently growing, but the same cannot be said about John. In the US, his life just became even sketchier. In 2016, he was appointed as a CEO of MGT Capital Investments. The company was originally focused on investing into social gaming companies, but John would change the focus to cybersecurity. Specifically, John wanted to leverage cryptocurrencies and blockchain technology to improve cybersecurity. I think a lot of us would agree that this is an awesome idea, as blockchain technology does seem to be the future of cybersecurity. But at the same time, John was also involved in pumping and dumping cryptos. Between December 2017 and October 2018, John would recommend cryptos such as Redcoin and Dogecoin to his Twitter followers. He would then go on to sell his own holdings after the prices of these cryptos were inflated. This practice would eventually get him charged for securities fraud. John entered the crypto space decently early, and I think he could have built something rather large if he put his mind to it. But unfortunately, he chose to spend his time pumping and dumping meme coins. And that brings us into his final activity, which would seal his fate. In 2019, John revealed that he hadn't filed taxes since 2010, citing that taxation was against the constitution. He even tried to remove taxation by trying to become president in 2016 and 2020. In 2016, he originally ran as a candidate of the newly formed Cyber Party, but he would eventually switch over to the Libertarian Party. Though he didn't win the nomination, he actually did pretty well. He placed second in the primaries and third in the Libertarian National Convention. In 2020 though, his bid for presidency wasn't nearly as viable, as he was being chased by the IRS for tax evasion. Eventually, the authorities would catch up to him, arresting him on October 5th, 2020. At this point, he was basically screwed. His decade of tax evasion had earned him up to 30 years in prison, meaning that he would likely spend the rest of his life in prison. On June 23rd, 2021, his extradition to the US would be approved, 
and a few hours later, he would be found dead in his prison cell, seemingly due to suicide. His wife says that he wasn't suicidal, and in 2019, McAfee tweeted, quote, If I suicide myself, I didn't. I was whacked. Considering this, his wife is seeking a thorough investigation into his death. Unfortunately though, this is likely one of those cases where we will never figure out what happened. What we know for sure though, is that John McAfee was a pioneer in cybersecurity, and we all use bits and parts of his original technology today. What do you guys think was the turning point in McAfee's life? Comment that down below. Also, drop a like if you think that McAfee deserves a fair and thorough investigation. And of course, consider joining our Discord community to suggest future video ideas, and consider subscribing to see more questions logically answered. But until then, I'm Hari, and I'll see you guys on the next one.